Welcome, everyone. My name's Brett Foote from Wisconsin, the North American Clarets Burnley supporter. You just got beat by company's big, bald head. You're now listening to the DU Football Show. Well, I mean, it wasn't a victory, but at least it was a draw and finally some points on the board for the old uh, Claret and Blue. What, my Claret and Blue? No, oh, we his Claret ass. and Blue. Oh, we're the OG Claret and Blue, and they know it. Well, I mean, maybe one day they'll fuck. Let's start the show. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right day, yay, the fucking Gooner Graham. Snow the Lord, but straight and short. Sam Grammy. Sam Graham. Gets everyone every single time that Abby uh, coaster. It's the best. It really is the best. Solid. Hello and welcome to the DU Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two, well, three common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me, uh, my co-host, Mr. Graham, is on paternity leave, but we uh, have two fantastic co-hosts this week. First, the drippiest fucker on the planet, Alan. How you doing, brother? I'm good, baby. Love to see you again. This time you see me in person. I am. I'm sober Yeah, for now. <laughs> much, much more than I was that <laughs> night. I don't recall saying good night to you. Uh, yeah, I would expect you not to. <laughs> <laughs> Then, possibly the smoothest top pipes in the business, next to, of course, my brother next to me, uh, one half of the Naptown Blues fan cast, Hiram. How you doing, brother? I'm 23 dead, but still alive. <laughs> <laughs> He's already learning the status of grown-ass man. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, as always, Mel on the ones and twos. How we doing, Mel? I'm good. We've already got some chatter in the chats, uh-huh. and uh, Christian... Hiram and Alan swoon. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, no, Christian, we denied him a show last week. So. We had to go live. Yeah, exactly. For the children, son. You know? For <laughs> the children. For the children, exactly. Just like the woo. <laughs> hey, Naptown Blues ain't nothing to crab with, baby. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, we are recording at the DU Public House just outside the nation's capital. You can find us wherever you get your pod. And, of course, we are streaming every single Monday night. Should you want to chat with us, there is many ways that you can. Alan, tell the good people how they can get in touch. Oh, you can always find us on all your favorite social media sites. It's, it's Rumble, Telegram, uh, <laughs> you know, all of the good conservative Grindr, ones. Grinder, Tinder. Yeah, Grinder, <laughs> Tinder, any of those at DU Football Show. Show, follow us there and of course for your email and pleasures send us some emails do you football show at gmail.com very good so i work in the wine and spirit industry but fuck it we all drinking tonight and uh we all have a very deep passionate love for distilled spirits so as the red-blooded americans we are we've got to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show Hiram, just like on uh, the Naptown Blues fan cast, what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking some Old Fitzgerald. It is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, uh, bottled in bond, also a unicorn bottle, according to mm-hmm. what my host here has mentioned before. <laughs> uh, this is from the fall 2021 collection, but it's also 11 years age as well, too. Very good. So what we mean by unicorn bottles, it's very popular bottles from very popular distilleries that are limited releases. And they're just fucking impossible to get. So, and when you do get them, they are typically well over market value. This should run you about 115 to 125 on the shelf. Uh, I got it at friend prices at 175. I typically see it somewhere between 250 and 300. I probably would not have bought this bottle if it wasn't for the fact that it was on two years ago, the 2021. Uh, whiskey advocate top 20 list so that's why we ended up buying it a lot of times for people like Sam and myself we we know enough people who have it if we want to try it we can try it right. you know and normally we can try it sans expense a few things for you to know Hiram just so you read all these things and you're like what the fuck does all this mean they like me bottle and bond is a government statement so like how there is USDA prime it sets a certain level of quality so in the whiskey world what bottle and bond means is that it is a minimum of four years old and it is a minimum of 100 proof and the government stamped it and officially knows exactly 
that that is certified bottle and bond. Gotcha. So just a extra level of quality. So you can even find inexpensive bottle and bonds that are like, you know, $20, $30 a bottle. But with those, they are a minimum of four years old. And mm. you know that every time. And it's going to be a minimum of 100 proof. You know that. You pick up that bottle, you see BIB, bottle and bond. That's what it fucking means. Got you. And <clears throat> it's just old school fucking bourbon, man. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> just old school bourbon. It's good as shit. It's, it's very really delicious. Very smooth. Yeah. And uh, you boys are lucky enough to be experience what we like to call bottle killer nights. So this is one of those ones. <laughs> Now, once more, <laughs> the as you all famously know, look over your shoulder. There is a fuck ton of alcohol in my uh, closet, including a fuck ton of whiskey. <laughs> and what will happen is, is you tend to have a lot of open bottles. Mm. And then you start to look around. And you're like, I'm running out of room and I see a bunch of fucking open bottles. So like tonight I was going to open something new for you guys. But I was like, nah, fuck it. We're going to we're going to do some bottle killing tonight. So oh, we've yeah, got brother. this one. And if we finish these for the um, <clears throat> EFL show, got another one. Also, that's one of those kind of unicorn hard to get bottles as well. So lovely. Nice. And uh, Hiram, what do we always have to do when we drink? Ladies and gentlemen, please drink responsibly. Very good. Let's get into it. Yeah. I think you say it way better than Graham does, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I say everything better than Graham. Let's be real. That's yes. Fair. Very good. <laughs> facts. <laughs> Nothing. Just listen to do you spitting facts. Just I. <laughs> Graham, stay away. We don't need you. You'll be all right. I would still love you, best. <laughs> uh, we start with two clubs at the top of the table who both found themselves down at the half, only to score three in the second to secure victory. Liverpool three, Wolverhampton one, Manchester City three, West Ham one. Um, only mistake the Wolves made was not taking advantage of their opportunities in the first half. Yeah. They were far and away the better side they outplayed liverpool in the first half no doubt about it i genuinely didn't expect like liverpool to falter as quick as they did in the first half mm -hmm. let alone let them like their midfield of course didn't seem like it was that structured it's all of course uh attack based as they probably mm -hmm. have been this whole season so far but at the same time like you said wolverhampton is pretty much been dismantling them the whole first half and then we all know what happened in the second half. Acuna should have put that one away. The one that he jumped up in the air a little bit too high for and ended up kind of hitting off of his thigh. I don't think he was expecting the ball to come in where it came in at, but that should have been two. Yeah. That should have definitely been two. Yeah, I mean, big big mixed chances, like you said. And then I'm just, I'm still a little unconvinced on Liverpool. Uh, honestly, I mean, they're, they're grinding out results, yeah. obviously, but they've been beaten in most of these games that I've watched them in. They just find a way to win. Mm -hmm. So that, that Chelsea draw, I think Chelsea was probably the better side. I mean, it's yeah. the, the only time this year that we can say that say, about Chelsea. Rare, rare uh, well, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the other interesting one is, you know, so far McAllister's filled in the role that he doesn't normally play very well. Mm hmm this time he didn't for Klopp and Klopp had to make that change yep. at halftime and fortunately there's depth because they yeah. got a lot of midfielders but mm -hmm. like you said Alan that was not a convincing performance from that midfield in the first half correct that's uh, I mean that's been the problem area right for what one season or two now uh, let's call it that and, <laughs> yeah yeah but probably and it still seems to be the issue I mean obviously the talent's there I think McAllister's great I think I, I sung mm -hmm. Slobosly or whatever his yeah. fucking name is uh, his praises the, they're great individual talents but it's figuring it out i think right. they're just they're lucky they have the firepower up front that they have or mm -hmm. else they'd be in a real big problem right right and uh that was the one thing uh you look at the score line and i gotta say the score line does not justify what this game no. really was because it was a couple of late ones there for uh for liverpool for the victory yeah because it was like what the last two goals within like the 70th minute and after something like that mm -hmm. yeah i'm pretty sure i mean I think even second might have come in like the 80th, almost or 78th or something mm -hmm. like that. So it was late. And then they get a scrap, you know, scrap heap goal at the end. Yeah. So uh, moving on to City and West Ham, uh, James Ward-Prowse doing it from not a set piece. Look at that white boy doing a diving <laughs> header. <laughs> Be like, no, 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 man. You're supposed to like take corners and shit. What the hell are you doing doing diving headers? And uh, the other thing worth mentioning Paul motherfucking Ariola uh, to steal something from my team. Get the rave on son. Mm -hmm. That kid was on fire in the net in the first yeah. half. Crazy. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I think when I watched that header, I screamed. And I, 
I'm an American. I'm an American <laughs> outlaw. I am not. I don't give a shit about the three lines whatsoever. Right. But how is he not in the English side? Mm, it is. Not. I know this is not that show, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, this guy needs to get into that side immediately. It's, it's Bellingham. It's Rice. It's uh, still even um, no. Phillips with a mount. But even Phillips is on the bench still for them. At, yeah. uh, uh, and he's but, not even playing at all at City. What, what, you, what are you carrying Phillips for? Put this fucking <laughs> on the guy on the bench if you want to. Like, it's I, ridiculous. Well, I mean, especially just when... I mean, it is same opinion like when they had um, Leighton Baines on the team in the Euros and they lost to Iceland in the penalties and they didn't, they brought Leighton Baines on, but then didn't have him take a penalty take kick. A penalty. And I'm like, you understand what he does, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like why, why not have James Ward Prowse on your bench just so that if you're down by one late in a match and your guys find a way to get a foul? If it's not a direct free kick that he puts in the back of the net, yeah. it's a corner that's perfectly placed where it's an, or it's a long ball that's be, like, just put him out there. Mm -hmm. He's going to put the ball in front of the net, and then you let Harry Kane do what Harry Kane does, yeah. right? Like, Or fuck, even you, if you're going to carry fucking Harry Maguire and stick him on to ruin things for you, at least give him the guy who can serve him up a donut. Right. You know what I mean? And have him plug one in. But yeah, it's that's just crazy to me. And weird enough for David Moyes, this shit's been working, man. He's like yeah. every it's it's old school Everton Moiseola fucking ball. It really where it's is. just like, fine, you can have all the possession. Fuck you. We're gonna make your life living hell. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get one past us. And and really, until Pep made those adjustments in the second half, it really didn't look like City was gonna find a way in. Now once they did over yeah, then, yeah, then it's open and uh doku um obviously i brought him up on the transfer recap i definitely know i said his name no i didn't yeah. at all nope <laughs> no, I didn't. don't, don't recall don't day. recall that one <laughs> sneaky under the fucking radar summer oh, siding wow. man i mean that's one of those guys like he's already got two goals on the season you're kind of like where did he why wasn't anybody else bidding for him mm -hmm. How, like it might be another one of those just like i'm going to city or i'm going nowhere like yeah. like erling holland like there was he was going to fucking city. Yeah. That's the only place he was going to go to. I think yeah. that's the reason why I was so under the radar is because you also look at how much attacking depth they have over at city from Foden, Holland, uh, Grealish, Silva, but yeah. even still like, having that extra talent, but having his pace, Doku's pace on that outside, especially for someone who's as attack minded and can really beat you on the counterattack alongside with Holland. Like mm -hmm. I heard, I heard this on another show. Someone said like having Doku and Holland on that counterattack is probably the most deadliest attack you can have in a frame at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Holland, Holland should not be as fast for as giant and goofy no. and white as he is. Absolutely not. He should not be that fucking fast. Yeah. He should at least be some kind of brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Cause, cause I'm convinced. he's, yeah, he's yeah. sold. He's the whitest of white. He's Norwegian. Yeah, he's he's, he's a like, Viking. He he makes us white people go, damn, that that boy white. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, I think that Doko's huge. I think you're right. I think it was maybe one of those, like, he's only going there. Yeah. And I think what it does in this whole conversation, I mean, weird to touch back on England again, but Foden coming inside, playing more of the 10. I, I think Doku frees that up. Mm -hmm. You've got reliable width, so you don't have to push Foden back out. You right. know, like... It, it's Pep doing Pep, yeah, I think, yeah, honestly. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Is it me, or does Erling Holland scoring just become inevitable? It Like, in I, a game where he had a lot of opportunities and Areola kept fucking turning him away, you're just like, okay, well, some days it just doesn't go in for yeah. a striker. Except for this one. At mm -hmm. this point, you might as well do over-under if he's going to at least score two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insanity. It, it really is. And he, here's the funny thing is in comparing them to what everybody else is doing so far, right? They're finding a way to win no matter what. Mm -hmm. right? Where everybody else, it might be a draw here for, for Arsenal or or a draw for Liverpool. Like, everybody else seems to be making those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> you say to yourself, well, what about the head-to-head? -head? I don't see Arsenal beating them. I don't see... I don't see, Now, United is, is its own set of mess, but... But United at home at Old Trafford can get at City. They have, and they have done it historically when City has gotten 100 points. Mm -hmm. You'll look at their one loss, United at fucking Trafford. I don't think there's any way in hell right now. I've seen no. nothing where this team will lose. Right. When they're going to lose, it's going to be to like 
a fucking Sheffield United or an Everton or a Wolves and it'll be away and it'll be this like one nothing that they owned 90% of the possession because I don't I don't feel there's another invincible out there I just think that that's a gone past that's yeah, a time gone past like it's never gonna happen again no <clears throat> I feel like there's they've got a loss in them they've got a fall yeah, asleep at the wheel do. but right now they don't and no. this team typically starts slow mm -hmm. they don't start on and I think we all need to be pretty fucking nervous yeah. that they're already fucking on yeah <laughs> We had some injury time dramatics for a couple of home sides. Aston Villa 3, Crystal Palace 1, Tottenham 2, Sheffield 1. Uh, Palace aggravated the hell out of Villa. I mm -hmm. mean, Mel, that must be, you were at the Dark Horse with a uh, famed Crystal Palace so supporter and your mother, uh, Jan, and... That must have been just frustrating as shit to watch it that was, first half. It was very frustrating because... So frustrating. So frustrating. <laughs> uh, Man, your mouth would explode. explode. I mean, if you're going to do the beer fest thing, you got to do it all. The bubble. Yeah. The bubble. The bubble. It's the bubble. Plus, since I drove, she was about <laughs> two or... So frustrating. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right, off the on. rails. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't had any 99 yet. <laughs> no, never again. <laughs> never. Oh, the nights, young Mel. Come on, there's never some in the freezer. Again. Don't ever say <laughs> never. Thanks. Don't don't challenge me. God damn, you know what comes of that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think you should just split them between those two. <clears throat> okay, so Mel, go ahead, continue. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, Villa fucking. Well, so, they didn't fuck in the first half. It was no. a dry. It was a lone Lauren Bober yeah. hand job. Smash, in the first smashing fight. it. <laughs> <laughs> got him coach got him there's a lot of gale the snail in the first half <laughs> i'm done okay, well, I'm done. i can't we're back uh yeah mom was about three mimosas in and so she was getting quite lippy and i wasn't appreciating it mm -hmm. one bit and honestly palace only scored because emmy lost his footing Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's it. They capitalized on a mistake, which is the only way they were scoring, as we demonstrated in the second half of the game, where, uh, is that the dog? I was going to say yeah. the second half of the game. No, more like the 87th minute that yeah. Villa started fucking. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, <clears throat> we were, we were free-balling at that point, dare I say. Um, I don't know if you boys saw it. There's a uh, picture that Mel put up in the... Oh, there's a video. Oh, there's... Oh, the, but. It's the three goal scorers, and um, oh, I did see this. Let's yeah. just say they're um, they're engorged. They're not even engorged. They're, they're just they're celebrating together. But um, they're just let's... happy. <laughs> there was a lot going on downstairs, yeah. and it was very noticeable through their white a shorts. A Brazilian, a Frenchman, and a Jamaican <laughs> all <laughs> score a goal. Yeah. <laughs> Dex Dexter Saint Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Show title. <laughs> there you like go. Um, uh, in the chats, Villa had whiskey dick sobered up at the right time to get a good three pumps in, and well, you know, <laughs> left with Mel's favorite, I sang. Yeah, very good. The um, uh, gentleman, was that a penalty for you? Mm. Mm. Huh? Is, that, is that an answer? Mm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> interesting that it took him as it long was. as it did to look at that. Yeah. And it was funny that he came back and it was still a penalty because he called it a penalty on mm -hmm. the field. Normally they go to that screen. They're mm -hmm. usually, yeah. It's getting, they're going to do the big old square and go, no, you know, yeah. it's normally what's coming. Um, <laughs> my, my thing for me is I feel it's a penalty because of the following. Yes, the defender got the ball. But he completely went through also, the yeah. man as well. And it it might not have been the hardest tackle, but at the end of the day, great. Unless you end up with full control of the ball. Yeah. This was he knocked the ball away and then slid completely through the man. And it's uh and we'll get to yours later. I mean it's yep. <laughs> so, soft, sure. But a penalty? Yeah. 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 You know, like you said it best. Yeah. 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 Um hmm. Hey, um, I, uh, I, cause when it shows up, people commenting from the Facebook, uh, the do you group, uh -huh. I just says Facebook user. So I didn't know who <clears throat> to give credit to that line to. Uh -huh. 
Do you want to guess who the Villa Pumps line was? Uh, Taylor? No. No? Your co-host, Sam Graham. Uh, yes, Sam, I'm listening in and Jesus. sound checking y'all. Nikita was inside fucking deep state, Daesh Manchurian candidate stuff. <laughs> the sad part is, Graham, is we're barely going to talk about that because the game, <laughs> when we get it, it's specifically in Oh So That Happened because... Our game was fucking boring. Can I okay. can I pitch an amendment to the show lineup? Sure, go ahead. I mean, we just kind of talked about it. Can we just fuck it? <laughs> <laughs> um, it feels right. Alan, he doesn't live that far away. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are people scared of Sam Graham? No, I, no, I no. would not put it past him to get in his car Come and drive on over here. <laughs> um, and I tell, I tell you... Um, uh, Mel, for you, it's like that's one you gotta win at home, and I'm sure you're relieved. But at the same time, you're like, God damn, why did like, it why weren't we long. ever able to get out of first yeah, gear? That's got to be concerning. There's a lot of people concerned about <clears throat> Ollie Watkins and his inability to com- to uh, have full completion, yeah, composure. Um, <laughs> I think he may need to do some kegels, and that'll help him. I, honest, honestly, that's very it's very easy to fix. Your backup has come on now in multiple matches and has put a couple in the net. Yeah. You know what? If Ali has a few more weeks where he's not getting mm-hmm. it done, you put in Duran to start yeah. a fucking match. That's it's, oh, and yeah. it's very simple. Oh. That's competition, yep. right? Duran yep. made it look so <laughs> sexy. That Your shot. team will get perfect to it later, example, but a yeah. perfect example is Colin Wilson's been coming off the bench, scoring motherfucking goals, mm-hmm. and Isaac's hasn't. Yep. So what happens? What fucking do you do? Switch it up. Switch it up. That'll def- you'll be in the next few weeks. You can see Isaac mm-hmm. put a fucking couple in the net, right? Well, because yep. It's just that nice, That's how it is. simple yep. reminder. It mm-hmm. just lets you yep. go, oh, I need to be a little more focused in. And it's not that he's missing those shots on the pitch because it's game time and he's nervous. He's probably not putting in the pinpoint accuracy and training and time mm-hmm. on the practice pitch. Yep. And that results in what you do on the the Correct. main pitch. Yep, That's really it. what it comes mm-hmm. down to. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, Tottenham and Sheffield. Really, not a fucking lot to talk about. This first half was, in fact, the Saturday games, funny, I do my live. I talk about how butt-ass boring the entire games were for the first half, and then all of them yeah. were fucking barn burners in the fucking second. Yeah. <clears throat> Unlike Sunday, which gave us one goal. <sighs> one goal. Don't worry, your team will never score. It's okay. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Billion dollars gets you zero goals. Woo! Uh, The the thing in this match is it all comes down to, again, someone not starting. Yep. Richarlison, who was starting and not putting the ball in the net, comes on, gets a goal on the header, and then it gives up the assist for uh, Kuliszewski on a dandy of a fucking shot Mm -hmm. from him. Now... All of that, though, which is interesting, happened in the 8th in the 11th minute of a 16 additional fucking minutes to a match. Yeah, that was, that was wild. <clears throat> I just fucking crazy. And even um, the coach, um, Heckenbottom for uh, Sheffield, later on, he aired laundry. He yeah. came with receipts. He was told that his keeper was in jeopardy of getting a second yellow card. And this is what he was told by the fourth official. He should just start hoofing it down the field. Weird. Yeah. I did not hear that. Yeah. yeah no, and he was that. not happy about that because he's like, part of the game is stalling. And yeah. I'm playing at Tottenham. I'm up yeah. one nothing. Yeah. I'm a relegation battling team. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my strategy. Do, yeah. Right? And also the other funny thing is we've all seen the keeper get the yellow for stalling. They still stall the rest of the game, and they never. Mm -hmm. And it does not matter what team you are. It does not matter what level you play at. You never see that keeper may get a second yellow for doing something else stupid, Mm -hmm. but it ain't for time wasting. No. The minute he gets that one for time wasting, he ain't never getting another one again. Yeah, of course. So it's just funny that that the... Officials are flat official. out going, oh, yeah, we'll give him a second yellow. Oh, kinda, some bullshit. Kind of fucked up, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, here's the other question um, for you. Uh, uh, well, uh, sorry, real quick, wanted to mention. Hammer, 
the Coventry City new signing for uh, Sheffield scores again, and it's another fucking peach, mm -hmm. an absolute peach of a goal. And looks like between him and Archer, like there's some signs of life yep. for for this side. But also, you got to start wondering for for Sheffield. Heckenbottom was with the team when they went down. He was with the team the entire time when it took him two seasons to get back up. Do you think he might be on the leash? Do you think he could be the first guy axed? I, I mean, I think he's got to be on the short list, right? Yes. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Unless Sheffield's comfortable just going back down again. Right. That's what I wonder, <laughs> you know, too. At some point in time, you got to cut your losses and yep. say, all right, we got to stay up. Like, uh, the, uh, the rumor, the rumor going around right now. Hey, Mel, an old tried and true favorite uh, for, uh, for everybody. Good old, uh, apparently, Chris Wilder. No. Might be fucking coming back to Sheffield. I thought you were United. about to be like Steve Bruce. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Allardyce. <laughs> Rounding out the rest of the league. And oh, so that happened. Fulham won, Luton nil. Brighton three, Manchester United one. Newcastle one, Brentford nil. Chelsea nil, Bournemouth nil. Arsenal one, Everton nil. Burnley one, Nottingham Forest one. Uh, Vinicius off the bench gets the uh, goal for Fulham. <sighs> Where the fuck are the goals going to come for Fulham? <laughs> They're in Saudi Arabia with Mitrovic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Vinny looks good though. He's 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 very good, but yeah, they're a problem. Yeah, that's a big problem. I think that's really starting to become a big deal for Fulham, and um, I think there's plenty of talent there. I think they're perfectly able to be like a 12th place team but i keep thinking this team might be in the dog hunt for those those lad that last you know 17th uh, yeah. 18th place fucking spot like they don't figure out a way to start scoring goals soon especially with somebody like silva who is an offensive minded mm -hmm. coach <sighs> can't keep relying on the defense and jared leno standing on his head to get it done for you eventually that's going to catch up to you like so I'll say the same thing for Everton. You can't keep expecting Pickford to fucking bail you out. Like, at some point, that shit's going to fucking come back to haunt you. It really will. Each of you, your first impressions of Luton being up in the league now. Mm, I mean, it's it's fun. It's a fun story. They're not, and they're not awful from what I've seen. They just can't, they can't score. And, yeah, they just, I don't think, they they look like a perfectly respectable championship team. Yeah, uh, but they, uh, there's just nothing there for me to think that they're going to stay safe. Yeah, uh, it's it. Yeah, I'm, I might sound ignorant, but I like the color orange. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there aside from that, um, only only time I really got like true evidence of how they were was obviously I guess in the Chelsea match. Mm -hmm. But from that, of course, it, that was even somewhere of a tough three nil three nil win over them. But that was still like obviously bottom of the table Premier League. Mm -hmm. If maybe top half championship team like uh Alan mentioned, but you're in the bottom half right now. <laughs> you know what? Been all of last season, we got. I I only judge when it's ten matches in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ten okay. ten matches, ten matches ten in, matches. and then we'll get into the very <laughs> okay very nitpicky good. shit. Okay, that's good. I just want to make sure that. But at the same at the same time though, like when you're talking about a bottom of the table club, I mean you're a bottom of the table. <laughs> Wait till 10 I matches. I'm not saying that. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. Do we have a uh, special caller? This fucking asshole? Oh, uh, hey, guys. Oh, great. Oh, uh, sick. Show's going to run a fucking hour now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> going to run two no, and a half not, hours. It, 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 it's very quick. I, I just I can't <laughs> believe we're going to let the opportunity go uh, without using some Duran Duran uh, song title puns because of the goal uh, at Villa. And I thought it was a missed trick, and I'm pretty sure we needed to let everyone know that Villa supporters aren't living in an ordinary world anymore. <laughs> and Duran was hungry like the wolf because Palace came undone. <laughs> and they saved the prayer for stoppage time, okay? That's all I'm saying. And y'all missed the trick, and the quality of the pod definitely goes down when I'm not there is all I'm saying. I don't, wow. think, that's oh, I don't think that's true. Okay, the swab this year is different. If, if you're not going to take advantage of the low-hanging fruit, then what are you doing? 
<laughs> well, uh, Graham, I, I would I would certainly say that maybe I was holding on to it for injury time when we talk about our fantasy team names because somebody definitely took advantage of that. But you know, you know that's okay. That's okay. So where would one find injury time, Sam, if they wanted to find it? It's actually quite easy, and you can stock the college fund for the new baby, actually. So if you could head over to www.patreon.com backslash uh, D football show and sign up for that one five dollar tier, I might be able to get one of my three kids a degree. Okay, well that's good. Why don't you go back and do what you we knew you were already doing and watch a bunch of girls on film? <laughs> <sighs> Why, why do we even let that guy call in, honestly? Because <laughs> he's, it's a, there's three of us. And I, I told Houston I was not going to solicit, but I would not turn down. <clears throat> yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and there, and there I gave him his own Durant yeah. reference. Yeah. <laughs> He, he said, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. So, um, yeah, moving on, um, Brighton, Manchester United absolute domination from fucking Brighton like this game was never in yeah. doubt they were yeah, far and away the better fucking side yeah is anyone sold on Onana yet uh what's that is anyone sold like Onana no. yet no I don't no you think he was just literally just a pickup just cause he was a former IX player yeah absolutely and um Ten well Ten Hag was like that's my guy right well and here's here's the funny thing I mean if only the guy you got rid of didn't lead the league in fucking shutouts last yeah. season. Yeah. Like, seriously. Yeah. The fact he's still not on the team is still kind of baffling to me. It's I'm, crazy. <clears throat> I mean, I know. Well, it's probably because he just wants too much fucking money. Yeah. Right? Definitely. He's being at Manchester United, he's probably looking at a club and going, yeah, I'll come and be your backup for 250 fucking million a week. Yeah. Or 250,000 a, a week. week. And yeah. people are like, yeah, They're fuck like, no, you. not for a backup keeper. But. They're like, we pay our backup keeper keepers fucking forty thousand a week. Thank you. Yeah. That's you, you'll make a few million and be done with it. Shut well, up. Well, you hired a sweeper and gave him gloves. So, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's that's that's that experiment. It is exactly what you said. I think he's he's an IX player. He was like, great, this is my guy. He plays the way I want him to play, and that that's not useful to them. I mean, kind of kind of a hot tape with same with Anthony too. Yeah. Even though I know he's a. Kind of a hot topic now. Mm, in this little, situation, little problematic. Very yeah. little. We would say he's a little Greenwoody, is what I would say. But what really <laughs> ultimately happened to uh, to United was. Get my way downtown, walking fast. I'm a seagull. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. They walked right into Old Trafford yeah. like a seagull in that video. Took the bag of chips and ran the motherfucking. Yeah, out. man. <coughs> I was oh, sorry. I was in the uh, the other side room watching the Villa match, and I would get up and go look at the other scores. And every time I walked into the other room, I looked at the Man United guy and I just laughed and <laughs> walked away. Um, here's one thing that a lot of people are kind of talking about is like, look at how great Deserve is, right? And I'm mm. taking nothing away from him as a coach, but. I think what we need to really be looking at is what a great fucking organization Brighton is. Yes, uh -huh. yeah. I'll be honest, they're great because because. Potter did great. Deserby's doing great. Yep. Mm, Trissard's gone. Fucking um, McAllister's gone. Mm -hmm. right? They just keep moving. They, yeah. The next fucking guy comes in. They're, you know, eh, we'll we'll find the next one. We're Me. okay. Oh yeah, Sanchez, you don't want to be our goalie anymore. Great, we got. We'll find another. It's okay. We're I'm good. I'm so jealous that Billy is Billy Gilmore is just driving over there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like he is crazy. so phenomenal over there right now. It's system. It's yep. system. It's, it's an incredible right. system. It's an incredible recruiting system. Mm -hmm. They find people gems for nothing. Matomo cost five fucking million dollars. Yeah. Best dribbler in the world. Right now. Yeah. Five fucking million dollars. It's insanity. And then you turn and you look at what United has spent. And you keep saying, it's like, okay, well, it's it's this piece. It's this piece. Like, oh, you had to get rid of Pogba. Oh, you got to get rid of Ronaldo. And, oh, it's this coach. Mourinho's too much. Or... You know, oh, uh, the gym teacher, fucking uh, Gunner, is too fucking. Holy Gunner Solshire is, <laughs> is too fucking is is too fucking nice and doesn't have yeah. a killer like, and all these things. And the one thing that's constant is this team has done fuck all since Sir Alex left. Yep, mm -hmm. and I think that also comes down to organization. Yeah, like there's a reason why United supporters want the Glazers out. They're just. They're only concerned about making money off of fucking shirt sales yep. and getting 
all the people around the world to wear a United jersey. They do not care one yeah. bit, it seems, about the success of the club. Yeah, I mean, let let Americans buy English football clubs at your peril uh, <laughs> because that's that's what it is, right? <sighs> uh, unfortunately. <laughs> um, well, you guys are spending more than you're making right now, so... You know, it is um, what it is. And we're about to have Americans <laughs> buy ours. Yeah. And uh, hers is American-owned. But, you know, you know, the good thing for us is uh, our hunters don't fucking kill people. That's fair. <laughs> well, <laughs> they do, just in different ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as overt. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 brilliant. But no, you're right, man. Brighton is the system. I mean, look, we, st- shit, we stole their head of recruitment when, mm-hmm. when we got bought. And yep. it's... I've, I've been fine with our recruitment since it is very much an organization and a system there. Mm. Uh, so uh, for for both of you guys, as we're talking about Manchester United, I need you to both kind of take off your hater caps, right? Because we all fucking hate United. This is we all enjoy this. It is funny. We love it. You need to take off that and just look at this club as a whole, because it's not like they don't have the resources to do it. And it's not like they don't have the talent. Right. Mm. And yeah, they're suffering from injuries, but when you're a big six club next man up, mm-hmm. you should have you should have a team full of subs that are good enough to start for any other club. So Alan, first to you, what is fucking wrong there? I I think it's still a mentality thing. And it starts from the top, it starts at ownership and works its way down. It's it's I think it's the, been the same since Sir Alex left. It's for me it's always been entitlement. Man United just expect to be at the Champions League table. They expect to be a top three, four team. They expect to win trophies. And this league has spread out. The money has spread out. Brighton. Like, Brighton just walked in. It wasn't Liverpool. It wasn't Chelsea. It wasn't Arsenal. It it was Brighton. Yeah. And that's not a knock to Brighton. But for Man United, they, they looked at that game and said, not a problem. Three, three of the teams in Europe this year. Villa, an old storied club, mm-hmm. Newcastle, an old storied club, but both of those clubs have had an influx of cash, maybe not as much as yours yeah. has had, but and and Brighton, a system. Yep. And you have teams like Tottenham and Chelsea that aren't fucking playing in Europe this nope. year. Yeah. Like they're not. They're not playing at all in Europe this year because everybody else done caught up. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these teams, they don't always have to sell until it's like stupid fuck you 140 150 million dollar fucking deals yep and a lot of these players aren't necessarily interested in leaving their heads aren't getting as turned as easy right. anymore it seems as well Hiram, your thoughts of uh, being a chelsea supporter and just having a, a natural hatred i mean this is just one of your longtime rivals as far as the history of the prem goes it was always arsenal chelsea and manchester united always battling for those early titles because right. Liverpool's only won one the same amount as Blackburn and Leicester just wanted to say that please huh. um, Iram your, your thoughts on United <laughs> well first fuck Mason Mount uh, <laughs> <laughs> second no it's back to what you said earlier like it's the lack of organization like the fact that one of the players having a fallout with the coaches and then they're still like not having I guess they're not in the right mental capacity at the moment but they're still not even seen as like someone who's seen at that top level but it go, like you said, even as well, like the entitlement that they have, because yeah. they're expected to, like, of course, just walk in and just be a, pretty much the shit. When in reality, they're just playing like dog shit. Yep. And when you have, let's let's be honest though, they obviously have like the clear top talent. Uh, aside from Bruno Fernandez, that bitch can go fuck off anywhere. <laughs> yeah. if, if ever there was a man with a punchable face, yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, they definitely have the talent there, but they clearly like the organization. Uh, Ten Hogs definitely had it from last season, but there it was also a structure already built in place for him for that. Mm-hmm. Now he's pretty much bringing his own identity, and with that, there's fallouts. There's lack of play. You have probably a whole myriad of, of players injured right now. You have Johnny Evans and Harry Maguire <laughs> as your two center backs at one point in a yeah. major, major rivalry match with Arsenal. I mean, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And let alone you have basically two of your attacking attacking players one 
out for legal issues for uh, doing some dumb shit. And another one who's pretty much just like having fallen out just because he's seen as not training the right way or right. not playing the way he should. But at the same time, you have to <laughs> call a spade a spade. It is still entitlement. He expects to get that starting role because right. when, let's be real, when he first came in, what, two seasons ago or something yeah. like that, mm-hmm. he was expected to be that guy that is until Ronaldo, of course, came in and yeah. fucked that over. But right. he was expected to be like that next man up, be the next star alongside Rashford. Like him and Rashford taking United back to the glory days. But it's really nothing. It's more of the mm-hmm. same old shit. It seems to be the only player with any consistency in that lineup is uh, obviously the veteran players like Casemiro and uh, Erickson know what they're doing, but yeah. really the only glimmer of hope in that side seems to be Rashford. Yeah. It really seems to be it. It's the only guy who seems to show up every single day and bleed on the fucking field he, for that patch. He is the only one that shows the more passion for not only the sport, but for the club itself. Like, of course, United Academy player. He came literally from like the ground up, and he's literally the man that you want to put your uh, poster on. So it's fair to say that Rashford is des- desperately the best player, regardless of mm-hmm. like everything else is going on with the team. But at the same time, like that's all they have. Yeah. Aside, of course, like Ericsson and Casemiro, but you can't really just rely on just those three. You need like a whole system, a <laughs> unit like a Brighton, like a Newcastle or mm-hmm. anything like that. Yeah. And uh, that ended the 10 o'clock games and then all the goals stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bees were certainly pesky and uh, they, they proved a good opponent yeah. to uh, Newcastle. I think there's still concerns for Newcastle about getting the ball in the back of the net. Mm-hmm. It was a soft pen, but at the end of the day, it was a fucking pen. Yeah. And Gordon knew exactly what he was doing. Yep. He put himself right in the right spot and he went down you could tell Gordon really wasn't trying to play the ball or trying to cut around the keeper yeah. or trying to go at net, but he knew the keeper went on his knees and he mm-hmm. was like, there's my chance, get in front of him and get the Just foul. Right and it, yep. it fucking worked. And We'll take it. What is it? <laughs> hey, Callum Wilson. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. Ooh, ha. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, it, they wear pesky. They are very organized. Very organized. Well organized. They're shite, but they're organized. Uh, uh so yeah, I, uh, we still got issues. We're still figuring it out. The midfield's a problem. I think Longstaff being back in mm-hmm. sort of settled it all down. Right. But we shouldn't. Longstaff shouldn't be our six. Right. Uh, Longstaff with, shouldn't be shouldn't not be with the Bruno. Answer. Not with Bruno and Tonali on the on the roster. Yeah. So I think it's it's getting them them figured out. Mm-hmm. Still figuring out the midfield. You're right. Isak pulled Wilson in. I think that was great. Yeah, it, it really just, was. It just changed it, really it up. And it was even uh, pulling uh, Joe Linton as well, who had well, a was really, uh, I mean, yeah. he had a really great year last year, but he's off to kind of a slow start this season. Yeah, the midfield's the midfield's still figuring it out. I think yeah. uh, last year we were entrenched with a certain midfield. Those three, four guys kind of rotated out and stayed that way, and now you've totally up, turned it upside down. Uh, so they're yeah, growing pains. It is what it is, but we'll we'll be okay. Well, maybe we'll, maybe, one. maybe we'll figure it out at the San Siro on Tuesday. You didn't lose. <laughs> uh, well, I know this much. All, all the fucking Geordies were singing in the fucking rain in uh, Italy today. Oh, oh yeah. Geez. They were they were already there. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Note, Newcastle shot glass, too. I appreciate it. Uh, you've had you've had Malort before with yeah, us, haven't you? I've been here more than once, <laughs> unfortunately. Remember, what, he's the one that dubbed it old Mike Ashling? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And if you remember, uh, when, when uh, we this first began, we fucking sucked. Uh, yeah. So every time I was here, I had one. Oh, yeah. God. yeah, and it fucking, it was awful. It's still well, awful. We, it's we a little less awful. We typically would refer to uh, Newcastle as the dumpster fire. That was just, their, yeah. we would just the wouldn't fucking, even call it Newcastle. Like, where's dumpster the, fire. Where's the Dortsperect? <laughs> fucking, yeah, there it is. Yeah. The sports direct mug. <laughs> it's it's a couple losers, but you know what? Uh, I don't have to put in this week. My bet, because my bet fucking won. Nice. So the Cherries <laughs> and Chelsea played a professional football match. They did in the English Premier League this weekend. Some, some might call it that. And now on to Arsenal at Everton. No, wow! Just kidding, just kidding. We got to talk about it a little bit. We got a Chelsea supporter in the room, of course. Um, <laughs> you know what? The the cherries, especially coming down towards the end, looked the more convincing side. Like the first half was definitely yeah. all Chelsea, but coming down the yeah. stretch, if anybody was going to nip one, it felt like the yep. cherries were going to be the team to fucking do it. Uh, 100%. I am so glad Sanchez stepped in. And just play play the 
decent enough game to, of course, keep us clean. Mm-hmm. But of course, the defense could have been better. The obviously attacking could have been better. But I don't know. It's it's hard to say. But at the same time, it's you got to be real with yourself and realize that like we have all the opportunities there for us. Like it was clear as day. Like we had, I think, six goals on target out of eighteen shots or something like that. Mm-hmm. Most of them could have easily gone in, but. The cherries who literally like had a fucking brick wall in front of the goal, mm-hmm. and there was one goal in particular. I think it was when Mudrick was coming down the side and he dished it off to Gallagher, and I thought that was the one that was going to go in at least give yeah. us that advantage, but clearly not because I guess he tried to take an extra touch to, of course, evade the defense, but it still wasn't enough. A chill needs to fucking start and play every fucking minute. Like, why the fuck did you have him coming out in as a sub? Like, he's one of the few things that can break down when a team packs it in because he has the ability to put off good crosses, yeah. but he also runs the flank, which will spread open a defense instead of a team full of guys who all want to play through the middle, which is what it seems like you guys are right now. And that's the issue that I have with, <clears throat> like, the one, the formation. Because, like, I saw the for, uh, game firsthand during the preseason where mm-hmm. it was clear as day, 4-2-3-1. Now we're going with a three four two one inverted, where it's like we still have like that wing back, but he comes to a winger, and then our left center back turns to a left back. It's basically like an inverted four two three one mm-hmm. still, but yeah. At the same time, like you said, everyone plays central. Like we're not like widening out the play at all. Like it's everything's just either playing through the wing backs, going straight to uh, well, Connor, or because you have fast fucking players too. Like yeah, yeah but some of them the are injured. Fucking game out. <laughs> some of them are injured, but at the same time. I don't know why we have we're playing the way we are, let alone having Enzo playing at the attack. Even though I would want to push up, but as a box to box rather than actually attacking mid, though. Right. Like that's my only issue that we have with that. Yeah. Because you clearly could put in Mujic right there. He'll fit in pretty much do tiki tackle with Jackson or Sterling if he plays out to the wing. But he always going to go out to the far side. He rarely goes inside by itself. Um, you've always had someone to quarterback the middle, be yeah. it Conte, Kovacic, mm-hmm. or uh, even Jorginho. Feels like you don't really have that quarterback anymore. It's That's why I thought it would have been Enzo. Yeah. But, again, like, I don't know if it's because we had pressure of, like, signing too many players, like which right. we clearly did again. Uh, well, or... if it's going to be Enzo, he's got to be deeper. He can't. Yeah. He cannot be all the way up like he is. Like, you that the the beauty of that quarterback is they they're the defensive holding midfield they just sit back and they do what Declan Rice does you know like that's what you do and it just uh, it's frustrating to watch I'm sorry for cutting you off there no no you're fine because like it's the way I would see is obviously you need to have Connor and Enzo there or Enzo and Consado there at least one of those two uh, duos play uh Enzo up, but not like too far up where he's of course being that attack, but still mm-hmm. playing like that deep line playmaker. And but you still have Casado being like that third man in the middle where you still have your two center backs or whatever. It's essentially still doing the four two three one, which I thought would be our technique because that's how Posh typically runs his uh teams and everything. Mm-hmm. But again, like I don't know if we're still trying to find our footing because we're still in the early days of this brand new squad. Like if you look at it, we still only have like what two, maybe three players from the uh, Champions League uh, right, final, right? So it's really a whole new squad that's still trying to gel together. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's new squad, new coach again. Yeah, and not it's 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 almost like I hate to, it's almost the cop out, right? But it's a spoil your spoil for riches. Like no, it is. You don't know. You don't know where to go. It's like you ever you ever played a season of FIFA and you got the fucking the, the team mm-hmm. takeover and bought yeah. everybody you wanted and there was like fuck. Homeboy's mad because I haven't played him in six games. Right. Like that's that's where you're kind of at. Yeah. And you just it's you've got to figure it out. I, I think you guys are also in the same boat. You got to find the six that kind of dictates the midfield. Yeah. Enzo probably should be it. He definitely honestly. is that person. Uh, right. You know what I mean? It's so uh, I think it's just a lot of growing pains. But you compound those growing pains when you start injecting hundred million dollar players that have to see the pitch whether you like it or not and you you've put a manager in a position to force things yeah and it's just not working so moving on arsenal do something they haven't done at goodison park in five fucking years which was get a win yeah sure as fuck wasn't impressive though not at all um it, it was they had at 80 percent uh possession to 20 percent and barely putting anything on target 
Mm-hmm. Everton and Dice seem perfectly fine to just be like, fine, you want to fucking pass it around the middle of the field? Go right the fuck ahead. Um, and uh, what Graham was yipping and yapping about before that Mel had put up is um, he was very convinced that uh, Nketia was not offsides for uh, Martinelli's goal. He was in an offside position. Mm. He ran into an onside position. Their player played the ball. It did touch one of our players, but our player did not directly play it to him, which makes it an inadvertent touch. Yep. Hence offsides. Graham is very angered by this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they could have just scored more than one goal and it would be a fucking moot point. <laughs> I mean, it took it took a it took a very special goal from Trissard, yeah. honestly. Although you could see just from watching the match, they were playing a lot of short corners. Mm-hmm. And Everton did not have an answer to no. those short corners, and you knew it was only a matter of time before they would get the passes around to get the right shot off. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to have, obviously, my own opinions, but uh, you guys being outsiders looking in, now that Everton has gotten through the transfer window, they brought in more people, your thoughts? I mean, is this team going down, or do you think this is a team that could figure out a way? <sighs> you want to go first? No, I'll go say ahead. It. You say it. If you think they're going down, say it. You have a chance to be mid-table at best, for sure. Uh, I think with... How can I put this? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Directly is how you can put it. Don't hold anything back. That's how this show works, man. I don't give a shit. I would definitely say... Let me help you. Championship (laughs) corner! Thanks, Mom. Appreciate it. And I can get (laughs) up! Oh, no! The support and love of a good woman Hilarious. is all you really need. That's so funny. I definitely That's say so you guys will be safe again. Yeah. Uh, I can see 15th for you guys for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, Alan, your thoughts? Yeah, I'd have to. I think you'll. There are three worse teams than you, and that's. And that I've, I'll be the dickhead, and I'm sorry. That's all I can really give. You. <laughs> no, it's like, fine. I'm okay with that. There are three um, worse teams than you. Uh, I think it'll be okay, but ugh. they got to start getting wins soon, yeah, and the schedule becomes favorable. They go to Brentford, which is the, probably a loss, but they have gotten points, or at, at least Brentford a draw. Before. Like get get right. a point, and then it's Luton at home and Bournemouth at home. If you don't There's walk away with points. six fucking yeah. points in those two matches, then mm, now you're, you're in trouble. Yeah. But you know what? You don't have to rely on Calvert Lewin being healthy. Beto can do a job, and he's got a motor, and he's a, he's exactly what Dyche wants out of a forward. Yeah. Dan Juma's decent, and you've got Harrison coming in on the loan, getting healthy, and 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 then you've got McNeil. Like there's pieces now. This defense is not as good as it once was. No, no, definitely not. I mean, thank God Branthwaite's playing and not fucking yeah. Mickey Keggers because he's a fucking statue out there. Absolutely, I would say. I think. Talent wise, do you you guys don't concern me? Dice concerns me. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's that's a that's a fair can point he, to be can made. Can he over the long haul make sure you guys stay up? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's something he did until he didn't. Yeah, exactly. Right. When and, and the last coaching job he did, mm-hmm. the last season he coached, he didn't until Ooh. he came here. You know, so you have to wonder if that that's in the back of your head. Yep. Finally, uh Burnley finally gets on the board with a point. Uh, denied a late goal on a, mm, I mean, I don't necessarily really think, I mean, the way that they make up the rules anymore for a fucking handball, yeah. who fucking knows, but it didn't feel intentional and unfortunately ends up being a handball. And yes, Mel, you're looking around all confused. Did I miss you doing your shot? Oh, you did. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Because I did. Hey, allow allow me allow me to say the following then. Good fucking producing for once. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm it, looking at my notes that go Burnley. It finally started tasting, stopped tasting like poop. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is I had to drink this very good bourbon over top of it. Well, <laughs> uh, as Alex Jones once said, somebody, somebody, send me, send me a bucket of poop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you may talk about Burnley. <laughs> Uh, kind of tastes like Burnley. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Burnley, uh, I, 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 I mean, who knows what the rule of a handball is anymore? So sure, yeah. I guess it's a handball. Um, but then Lyle Foster boneheadedly just throws an elbow into Yates and ends up getting mm-hmm. the red card. And it was like, you always knew Forrest is great at the city ground. But yeah. Burnley probably the better side. Burnley probably deserved three today. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Yeah, it was, it was, it, oh, it's, 
it was a it was actually a very entertaining game to watch like for for being what would be you know not March match up on yeah. a Monday night football night yeah I I've had this discussion with you I'll have the same discussion with you Hiram it's like for Burnley are you okay if you go right back down as long as you keep doing what you're doing which is you live and die by the system you have with Vincent company which is not 11 behind the ball not the old dice way of doing things like we're going to play out of the back we're going to play attractive ball and if we get bit in the ass we get bit in the ass I think of course with his influence with Pep obviously right um I think you might as well just stick to what you what you know best and just <clears throat> keep going to the wheels fall off obviously I think yeah. I think he'll be safe and there should be no reason for him to be sad of course he would be it does seem like he would just because he brought up a team from the championship to Prem and did not perform in the way you expected. Not everyone's going to jump into that high level and expect they're going to be right. Like, uh, I guess like a Fulham like last season. And they haven't looked terrible. No, that's the thing. They haven't looked terrible. No, not at all. It's attractive style. Like they, they played City pretty fucking well to yeah. lose to them three nil. They played them real fucking well. A lot better than a lot of other teams have. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I mean, if it gives me, I mean, this is a hokey <laughs> reference, right? But it gives me shades of Ted Lasso, right? It's like, mm-hmm. you guys are professional footballers. You understand the fucking concept. Let's get out there. We'll drill it and we'll try it. Yeah. And it's either going to work or it's not. We're right. going to get our heads kicked in or or we're going to actually scare some people and surprise some people. And I think you're right. I think they will be safe. I think there might there might be three teams. And if they start putting some goals in, a little momentum helps them. But yeah, ride it out, man. Fuck they, it. What are you gonna park the bus win. for? They gotta get that win. Yeah. That's what it really. You don't know. Happens. You don't know how to park the bus. You've been trained to do this. Go do what you do. Mm. So uh, I mean, the good thing is, is also they have a new ownership group, and the great thing is that they have had this long, long lasting Burnley fan. He never liked Chelsea ever, and JJ Watt. Sure money. So uh, <laughs> this time Mel gets to read everything because normally. All the stuff I read last week was on my phone, so I can't use my phone because I'm looking into my phone right now to look at all of your beautiful faces that I can't see in the internet. Hi, people. <laughs> but uh, allow me to go ahead and go first. I'm like, I didn't know. Did that mean I had to actually start the segment? Villa, Fulham, and Newcastle all fucked, baby. And that means I am back in the black, baby, at plus $89. Big Sam's Lock of the Week. Hiram, I'm not sure if you knew this, but 25% of the time, it works 100% of the time, <laughs> baby! I'm back! <laughs> Woohoo! Um, this week, I am playing a parlay of two over-unders, so I'm not picking a victor. I'm just picking goal output. Okay. So I am taking the under in the Chelsea hosting Villa match at two and a half. So I'm taking under two and a half goals, so less than three. Chelsea Villa, that sounds right. <clears throat> I'll be honest, that's, think, that sounds up I think it's one nothing or one one. Can you take under one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Villa's capable of scoring at least yeah, eight goals. I was going to say. You know, because Villa can actually score, you know, on, <laughs> on like Chelsea um, for two games in a row now. Oh, um, God. And uh, I am taking the over two and a half goals as Newcastle travels to Sheffield. I think this game's got two one three one written all over it. I'd agree. Yeah. yeah. I think you guys will give up one in their building. I think they're feeling the pressure. Yeah. And I think you guys will figure out a way we'll to score to two and, and, yeah. and win. So that's uh, my bet. And that is for, I didn't write it down, but it was for a plus 289. Mm. So that's what I went for okay. on mine. Um Mel, do we have uh, Pat joining us today, or do we no. just have an email for him? No. If I'm going to have to read all of this, I just gave the chicken part to Hiram. Uh-oh. Oh, very good. <laughs> the trick good. is, Hiram, you can't read it until you start doing it. Yep, and I love, you have to read it cold. Oh, God. <laughs> Obviously for the fuck-ups in the future. <laughs> you know, well, unlike Mel, who's an excellent cold reader. And now, it's time for our degenerate gambling friend, Pat's Pick of the Week. <clears throat> Hello all that are currently listening. Your neighborhood degenerate gambler is here for another great segment. I like hit Snoop on a blunt last weekend and I'm currently up $20 on the year. So this weekend there's only one match that matters and that's the one I'm going to place a bet on. Arsenal versus Tottenham! 
It's yep. all caps. I'm yes. assuming that was the <clears throat> delivery. Will be and my only wager. he doesn't say wager. Tottenham. He says Tottenham. I love it. <laughs> Which I love. I love it. And uh, <clears throat> if, uh, you know, Mr. Graham wants to take me up on a side $20, <laughs> I'm willing to do that as well. So I found a great bet on FanDuel. Correct score combination. Tottenham to win by 2-1 to one or 3-1 to one or 4-1 to one plus 900, son. There we go. I'm doing my own tat. I don't yeah, know I what know it's you become. Are. I'm good with it. So at 120, that pays off at $1,020. Now, if you have an awesome week, and uh, I'll talk to one winner and one loser next Monday. A P.S. I think Everton's going to get their first win this weekend. So peace. There we go. P.P.S. So I played golf today and drank smashes all day. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what's going on with you guys? So, um, Pat, uh, for context for you guys, uh, I grew up with Pat in my neighborhood. And uh, Pat, fuck, great dude. And um, he he works in the in the industry as well. He uh, does delivery and stuff for, for a competing distribution house. Gotcha. And um, he is, like, this very unassuming kind of guy when you're like, like just, you know, Pat's Pat, right? He's kind of normal guy. He growing up was like a sneaky fucking good pitcher, Damn. like little scrawny kid that could fucking just throw heat, like nasty. And you're like, you are way too small to be like just fucking slinging. <laughs> and then because his dad was a big golfer, he started golfing at a young age, uh -huh. and he's a fucking just stellar fucking golfer. <laughs> and might actually like betting on a game or two. <laughs> he's he's in his heaven right now because it's, you know, obviously you're coming up to baseball postseason, mm. college football at the start of the year, and the NFL that the boy is literally every Saturday and Sunday just in front of his TV with like a 30-pack. And, and, and app in hand just betting away. It's fucking great. Uh, why don't you tell us how um, Mr. Graham right. uh, had to say. All right, now I'm going to do the Graham voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> Cut down like a tree in its prime. My grand voice sounds like my bad voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you're, kind of you're doing great. Keep it going. Uh, cut down like a tree in its prime at Forest today. Last chance to remain in the black. Up 14. Villa over Chelsea. What? Time. Real quick. Just want to let it be noted. <laughs> Graham plus 14. Pat plus 20. Who? Me. Top of the fucking table right now, bitches. <laughs> Woo! I like it. Uh, up just $14. So uh, I'm going to take Villa over Chelsea, Newcastle over Sheffield United, and two double chances. Bulls over Luton or a draw, and Palace over Fulham or a draw, and that'll pay eight seventy two on a $100 bet. There he is, already going for broke, just going to keep going down the parlays hole. Parlays on parlays on parlays. <laughs> hey, but guess what? Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a chicken. <laughs> All right. I got All right. Yeah, you go. All right. The <laughs> person I'm doing it. You're already fucking it up. Don't worry. You're good. Uh, so We're all staring at you, Graham. Just know that. Yep. All right. Uh, Burnley ruined Kitty's bet along with Graham's, and now he she is at 2-2. Two -two. This week, I gave Kitty Lutton Town welcoming Wolverhampton. Kitty showed me a picture of her and Colin Solomon enjoying a Vesper Martinis. Uh, besides Ooh, being Vesper Martinis, that mm -hmm. sounds lovely. It does. Besides being on multiple James Bond films, Colin is also a big Hatter supporter, so she is taking on Lutton to win on their first Premier League match. Please remember to gamble legally and responsibly. It's okay to take a breath while you're eating. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Now I'm going full auctioneer style. <laughs> Which, by the way, side note. I saw that happen in person. That shit is fucking phenomenal. It's incredible. Yeah. It is. Oh my gosh. I'm over here cho like choking myself. Like, how did he not just. How? <laughs> He's literally like just spitting everything out and then snow's single. Uh, I can't speak. See? Uh, wow. Even the thought now of an auctioneer just fucked He's him up. He's verklempt. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm just sitting here looking at him, just letting him hang himself just slowly <laughs> but surely. It's fucking brilliant. Uh, Excellent. I told Excellent you I'm dying. I'm dying, but I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, old ass man. Well, all say. right. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up, boys and girls. Uh, gentlemen, first um, to Alan, uh, any parting words? Anything uh, special going on? Um, I might pull my hair out tomorrow. Um, if, mm -hmm. if you see me freaking the fuck out around like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, just know mm -hmm. something bad <clears throat> is happening in Milan. Job um, knows you ain't selling nothing tomorrow, right? No, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, uh, 
that there's something on the calendar. It's <laughs> it's uh, I'm not I'm not gonna be around for that. It's yeah. it's it's, it's um, I'll I'll be available by email tomorrow. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, what I mean? Te- shoot me a text. Be at the Abbey. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, we haven't decided yet. We mm-hmm. we might kind of just want to watch it at home. Yeah, just, I'm sure there's a lot of nerves going just, on. Yeah, for you guys. Like, I just don't want to. Cause like I I don't sit down. You've seen me yeah. at the bar. I don't, I walk and I pace and yeah. like yeah. I, I might just want to be home. Might want to be home for that one. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll go out. We'll go out for Dortmund or something. Let let, <laughs> let, let your wife do like what uh, my wife did for me last year as we were playing in that final match against Bournemouth, where she's just sitting behind me the whole time, just rubbing my back, going, "Don't <laughs> fucking die, fat man. Well, the pro- don't the, fucking die." Well, the problem is it'll be both of us rubbing each other's backs. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Us, like, fuck. true. She's a magpie <laughs> she, as well. She is. Just, uh, do the Bobert. <laughs> you hear that, babe? Mash it. I just need you to mash it for me tomorrow. Mid game, please. Uh, <laughs> I think mash it's going to have to be the show title. It might be. Yeah, it was. I mean, although I thought, what was it? The St. Jock was pretty uh, Dexter St. Jock? Yeah. That was pretty fucking great. <laughs> Some mm. Obscure Eddie Murphy jokes. <laughs> uh, ding, mics are on. <laughs> that's, that's correct. But, uh, Hiram, real quick, um, besides any, you know, anything else you'd like to plug as well, how's everything going with the uh, Naples Blues since we got you back in studio again? Uh, it is going very interesting. Now that the season is completely over, we are doing nothing but just local events. So just promote the community as well. Uh, making sure you guys are getting up to date. Uh, make sure you do get season tickets, though. Uh, yeah. We're still selling that. Uh, you'll get free jersey, uh, free scarf as well. <laughs> Uh, and also a bunch of added bonuses with that, so definitely go check us out for that. Free you, Jersey, what a good deal! Tell yeah. you what, middle of middle of July, it's pretty much the entire month of July, <laughs> uh, uh, all of June in the first week of July will uh-huh. be games because they can't play any games at, yeah. at home in May because yeah. obviously the academy's kind of mm-hmm. busy. But um, it's only a hundred bucks. Yeah, that's not bad. And then your boy is out in the parking lot with nice. the Bay Boys. Yeah, I might have to come. Might you have might to come have to come down. hang out. Yeah. yeah, the tickets are one twenty now. I'm sorry, oh, blue okay. looks good on me. Uh, whatever, <laughs> they went one, up. Oh, it's still it's fucking it's still a great deal. It's, it's a good deal. I believe it. Dude, Can I throw up a canopy you, while I'm in the seat? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, we do all that shit. Man. Yeah. Well, no, actually, in the stadium, yeah. it's um in the stadium we're on the shaded side. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they designed that. I was gonna say July July footy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we just sit out in the parking lot and get like really what some annihilated proper yeah. yeah. and the Amanda walks matter. around with pudding shots and jello shots. <laughs> yeah, just hanging yeah. around the mayor. Shit. Yeah. Hanging yeah. out with the mayor. <laughs> yep. All right. Well I'm yeah. in. Count me fucking in. Pretty oh, yeah. great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's love, so love. far away, but I'm coming. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking awesome. Well, you're just gonna have to get the wife to be driving your ass home. That's all. Yeah, she doesn't drink. And, so. and I that, do babe? bring and I do bring a bag of whiskey for every single tailgate. You hear that, babe? Two things. Mash it. And second thing, we're going to go sit in the sun while I get drunk and you don't. There we go. Uh, anything else you want to uh, promote, talk about, any of that good stuff? Any assholes out there in the uh, world of football today or anything? Any assholes? I already talked about Bruno. I already talked about Mason. Let's see. Uh, uh, Anthony's got a little bit of an image issue right now as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, nah, fuck it. I might as well do it here. Uh, I also have another show. Uh, podcast. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's just a personal project I do with myself and a couple friends, just a couple young 20 year olds talking shit, saying random stuff, you know, young kid shit. <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> but if you guys want to hear uh, anything, uh, uh, oh, uh, Alan, you're not, I'm young. not, I'm not in my twenties. <laughs> <laughs> We're in our thirties. <laughs> we've but, got, we've got all four decades right here. Yeah. 20s, 30s, 40s, and oh. Yeah, 50s. I it's know. Actually, yeah. It's actually probably less sad that you do it than that I do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we just talk about random shit, uh, pop culture stuff, things that training. So just find us. Uh, show's called Really Be Like That. Definitely check us out. We just did, our, oh, I just did our <laughs> season finale uh, this past couple weeks ago. So definitely check this out. And we'll be back with season four or maybe continue season three soon. But I'll, we'll let you know. Uh, my old ass listens to it, and it's a fantastic yes. show. I Thank mean, you. Uh, even though I don't understand ninety percent of the shit they're talking about, it will be a lot know. of shit. House of Beast. Yeah. I know. I'm I'm fucking boomer apparently. <laughs> 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 um, all right, everybody. Uh, next up is going to be injury time, where we chat about our fantasy. Uh, the beers we were drinking, which is very simple. It's fucking ice house because mm-hmm. Graham's not here and Mel's right. uh, a touch under the weather, so she's not having a beer this evening. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. drinking the fabulous <clears throat> Canada Dry. Mm. And she's she's had a bunch of my whiskey Vintage. too, so as well. 
Uh, and then, of course, um, we're also going to uh, do the EFL show where we catch up on the rest of the league as well. But should somebody want to find injury time, Mel, how do they go about doing it? Well, you find us on patreon.com backslash D football show. But honestly, the easiest way to do is just scroll down and find the link. It's right there. Could not be easier. Five dollars a month keeps this pirate ship afloat and lets us bring extra content into your ear holes. And if you want the flyest drip, go to the DU Drip Shop yep. for all your DU football needs. Until next week, everybody. Bye. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right, AA, the fucking Gooner Graham. Stuff of a lord. Look straight in shorts. Sam Grammy. Sam Graham. Get the fucking new button!